New tonight, we're hearing from Officer Whitaker when he appeared on an episode of Cops that featured Jacksonville. It aired 14 years ago today. Listen as he tells what got him focused on law enforcement. Initially, I became interested in law enforcement after uh, doing a ride along with a buddy of mine who works for the uh, sheriff's office. And uh, what kind of got me hooked was the uh, first call that I went on with him was supposed to be a burglary in progress, and there was a couple units with us, and we went there, and they were kicking in doors to try to apprehend suspects. So after that, all the fun and excitement, um, that's basically why I wanted to get into law enforcement. Incredible to see him speaking about his passion. Officer Whitaker had only been with JSO for three years when he filmed that episode. Whitaker made two arrests in that episode of Cops, one for cocaine possession and the other for resisting arrest. And today we saw an outpouring of support from the local community and state leaders. And Joy is joining us now. Kent, he may have been well known in his assigned Zone 6 now, which includes the north side. But today, 48-year-old Officer Lance Whitaker's name is known and being remembered statewide. News spread of Officer Lance Whitaker's death, beginning with an early morning message from Tallahassee. Governor Rick Scott and his wife Ann saying they are heartbroken and asking Floridians to join us in praying for this officer's family and loved ones during this terribly difficult time. Jacksonville Sheriff Mike Williams and Under Sheriff Pat Ivey showing up there at the site where Officer Whitaker crashed. Mayor Lenny Curry explaining how he heard the news. Terrible news, sad news. Uh, the sheriff uh, saw my phone ringing from the sheriff before sunrise, which is never a good thing. And uh, so it's uh, a very sad and tragic reminder that uh, at any time a member of our law enforcement goes out on a shift, no telling. Their family doesn't know what they're walking into, driving into. The mayor later observing a moment of silence with other local leaders at a planned active shooter training event. Jacksonville City Council members remembering the officer's family. My prayers go, go out, out to that family because he was, um, you know, serving um, the, the city. Our hearts and prayers are, are with his family and with all his fellow officers. Jack's Fire and Rescue rushed to help Officer Whitaker when he crashed off I-295. They're traumatized by that because, you know, this is somebody that uh, they've probably seen on calls, worked with. The Florida Highway Patrol was among those working a nearby accident to which Officer Whitaker was responding. For their fallen friend, flags fly at half staff outside Jacksonville's police headquarters downtown, while the entrance to the police memorial building is wrapped in symbolic blue and black ribbon. And at the police memorial wall, sadly, Officer Whitaker's name will soon be added to the list of heroes who all died protecting their community. Florida Attorney General Pam Bondi also tweeted just hours ago, saying in part, sadly, as we lay another law enforcement officer to rest today, she's talking about the Highlands County deputy killed responding to a dispute. She says, we learn of another loss. Please pray for Officer Whitaker's family and loved ones during this difficult time. Kent. Yeah, thank you, Joy. And a death on duty always makes an impact on the law enforcement agency and the surrounding community. I spoke with former Jacksonville Sheriff Nat Glover today. He called the wreck and the officer's death unfortunate and said it's the kind of news a sheriff dreads. Part that was um, so awful to me was having to deliver that message and, you know, uh, to go and, and, and say to uh, that family um, that their loved one is not coming home that night, uh, that day, and, and it was always awful. Former Sheriff Glover also says that you know, an officer is in danger of just driving a cruiser and pointed out that motorcycle officers are even at more of a risk. Our coverage continues at newsforjacks.com, and there you're going to find an interview with Sheriff Williams this morning after the crash, as well as other statements from law enforcement. Just look on the homepage.